It's time for the sandbox news. This week, Face Punch is doing a hack week, so a bunch of the Rust developers are making small sandbox games. There's a new tiled rendering system, which increases performance. There have been some updates to Boomer and the Boomer map, and I worked on my NPC zombie game a bit more. Face Punch is doing a hack week this week, so a bunch of the developers from Rust are making small sandbox games. If you didn't know, Rust is another game being made by Face Punch, which is the same studio making sandbox. A lot of the models and sounds in Sandbox are actually placeholders from Rust. So all the weapons like the SMG, the shotgun, the pistol, and even the car are from the Rust game. Eventually, Sandbox will probably get its own unique models, but this is what we have for now. The Half Week games that they're making include a horror game. I think this is like Resident Evil, however, I might be wrong. This soccer game called Saki Tio a maze game where you have to look out for enemies and bring the key to the exit. There's a game called Tower Wars, which I assume would be a tower defense game. There's a big jigsaw puzzle game and VR table tennis. Now, VR table tennis isn't necessarily a hack week game and it's not being made by the Rust developers. However, I think they're trying to fix it up and finish it during the hack week. Now, none of these games are finished yet, except for maybe the maze game. The maze game is pretty well polished. This is just a one week hack week, so I imagine we'll be able to play most of these next week. There is a new tiled rendering system. Now, I don't fully understand how this system works. It's a very technical rendering change. Now, from my understanding, it splits the screen into different tiles. I assume they render separately or something, and it increases your frame rate. This was just implemented, so there's still some bugs to work out. It works perfectly most of the time. However, sometimes there are some weird anomalies. I don't know if you'll be able to pick this up in the video, but you can see there are squares on the screen. If I turn off tiled rendering, there aren't any squares. And if I turn it back on, you can see the, the squares appearing and disappearing. Now, not entirely sure what's going on here. Still a work in progress, so I imagine these anomalies will get resolved in the future. What this new rendering system does is it increases performance by a ton, depending on the map that you're on. So currently right here on Office, I'm getting 83 frames per second with it off, but if I turn it on, it jumps up to 85. Wow, that's huge. So I found a spot on Office where I can show off the difference. You can see the green part of the performance graph is rendering, and in this spot on Office with tiled rendering turned off, I'm getting about 120 frames per second. You can see how much the rendering shrinks on the performance graph, and my frame rate almost doubles to 200. Now this only has a major effect on specific areas of specific maps. Specifically, the interior of Office has a major improvement in frame rates. Right here, with it off, I'm getting 80 frames per second. And if I turn it on, I'm also getting 80 frames per second. I think it's supposed to have a bigger effect on dynamic lights. So with it off next to this dynamic light, I'm getting 60 frames per second. And I turn it on, it goes up to almost 90. However, on my Haunted Forest map, it doesn't really seem to do anything. All these lights are dynamic lights, and with it off, I'm getting 30 frames per second, and now I'm getting 32 frames per second with it on. So it doesn't seem to really do anything in this specific use case. So not entirely sure how it works, but it is a frame rate improvement in some situations. So that's great. That's exactly what Sandbox needs. There have been a bunch of improvements to Boomer, so the map has gotten a bit of an art pass. Uh, looks like it might actually be finished now. It looks pretty detailed. So they went with this stylized look, which I think is pretty cool. There's also jump pads on this map now. I think there actually were jump pads before. However, they were in like weird spots, so they weren't really useful. Here's a cinematic fly through of the map. So you can see all the different details. There's a bunch of shipping containers. This map is called Dockyard. So you would expect to see shipping containers on here. Here are some of the different shipping containers. So we have Alex's Insta Goods, Storm, Faster Than Lightning, Safe Ship, Briscoe, Always Green, and I think that's all of them. So this map looks pretty cool now. It's not very realistic, as you can see. It's actually very unrealistic. It's a stylized look. There's also a new settings menu in Boomer. So in the tab menu, if I click settings, I can change the 
weapon position, tennis ball mode. Now, I don't think this actually does anything yet. I can toggle hit markers, damage numbers. I can batch the damage numbers. I can turn off the speedometer. Looks like I can change the gore mode. I can disable walk bob, turn off my own footsteps, turn off grunting, and I can adjust the announcer voice volume. It's revolutionary, it's crazy. There's also a spectator mode, and if there was a player on the server, I could spectate them. Aha, so I'm spectating the bot. Revolutionary. The in-game voice chat has been fixed again. So a couple weeks ago, I reported that the voice chat was fixed. However, it wasn't fully implemented yet. So we were forced to use positional voice chat and it was super quiet and the range was very low. Now, I don't think we can change the range of the voice chat yet. However, we can make it not positional now. So now we can actually hear people in the voice chat, which is crazy. I continued to work on my NPC zombie game. I implemented basic contextual pinging. So now if you ping a weapon or a zombie, it'll tell you what's actually there. I added two new shotguns, the double barrel and the compact shotgun. I also sourced a new model for the pipe bomb weapon. So it looks a little different now. There's also a new armored zombie. Now this guy's very strong and actually it looks like I made him uh, not very strong. He was way too strong before. So I need to make him a bit stronger now. I added a new adrenaline shot. So it allows you to move faster, regenerate stamina quicker, and perform actions quicker. I also implemented a new stamina system and sprinting. So previously when you held shift, it would make you slow down to not alert zombies. However, I've changed that so it's a sprint now. There's also a new climbing system. So if you're right next to an object and you press space instead of jumping, you'll climb up it. This allows you to climb up a little higher than you could jump before. So previously you wouldn't be able to jump up this distance, but now you can climb up there. This distance is too high though. I still have to implement this for the zombies though. Uh, currently the zombies can't climb yet. They can only do a jump. I also made some new, very yeah. realistic zombie sounds. Yeah. So you can hear the zombies and they sound yeah. very scary and very realistic. That's it, that's all the sandbox news. Subscribe.